JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFT Traders Espresso with me, Darison Charles, because today is the 4th of April uh, 2022. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, a quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD Research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on JFDBank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top. So now then, guys, jumping into the charts. So the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. The Nikkei index is still um, trading because the at the time I'm recording this video, yep, we still have a bit of time left until it closes. But what's interesting here is that this uh, 27,604 territory continues to provide support. I talked about this level last week, if you remember. Um, I said that if we drop below it, then yeah, uh, we'll consider maybe a bit of a larger correction to the downside. However, so far, we're not really getting that. And uh, we still have around, what, 20-something minutes left of trading here. Um, so I would say... Mm, Keep your eyes on this, but in a way, it seems for me that it might uh, close somewhere uh, just kind of a slightly above it. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to become very bullish here because for me, the uh, the upside scenario would come somewhere from a break uh, after a break of this 28,339 zone right here. And then, yeah, we could go for some higher levels at the moment. At the moment, uh, it is how it is, guys. Unfortunately, we need to keep continue observing this one on um, if you're like I said, if you're looking for some downside, wait at least for that confirmation break because uh, so far it's the, the index is stuck here in between the mm, it's stuck here in between the uh, the 100 day EMA and the 200 day EMA. Now uh, Hong Kong's Hang Seng index. Now the Shanghai Composite is closed today because uh, due to the celebrations in China uh, for today and tomorrow. Um, so yeah, the the Shanghai Composite will be closed tomorrow as well uh, but the Hong Kong's Hang Seng index is uh, running and uh, yep um, it is running to the upside slowly of course um, still not let's say with the strength that I would like it to see uh, here but um, nevertheless yep uh, showing some positive results um, but as you can see here this 22,423 level is providing resistance now as I said before I need to see a pop above that barrier because um, what I don't want to see here for example if this is going to get a hold of somewhere around here and then drift back down. Um, it might start oscillating around the 21 day EMA and uh, yeah. Um, I think that um, more, more, you know, this this kind of could lead to some just undecisive, some sort of undecisiveness. But at the moment, um, yes, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside because even technically we can see here a nice uh, ascending triangle pattern. Um, so this 22,423 level is it could be seen as a as a upper side of this triangle. Um, according to all the TA rules, these patterns. Uh, tend to break to the upside however we need to wait for that confirmation break still so once we get this break then yes this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and if we do see the index staying above this area that's quite quite important as well uh, if we do see this one staying above it then yeah I'll go for some higher levels for now I'm just observing the price action and cautiously leaning towards the upside uh, the German index, DAX. So yeah, guys, um, let's have a look what's happening here. Um, the index drifted on to the downside on uh, on Friday. Yep, 
uh, however, um, sorry, it drifted lower, but I think it, yeah, it remained a little bit more flat. So, um, so the only thing is that we can do right now is just kind of wait because, as I mentioned to you uh, previously, that for me it's considered the downside. I would like to see a drop below this fourteen thousand one hundred zone. Uh, for the upside, I would need to see a, at least a break of this downside line and a push above this fourteen thousand seven hundred and forty-five level. So, uh, if we take a look at the cash index right now, we'll see that the price is trading at around fourteen thousand five hundred level, uh, meaning that we are still below the downside line. Or, uh, but we're above that uh, 21 day EMA um, so we're kind of stuck here so that's why it's also a bit of a, a no man's game here at the moment so if you're looking like I said if you're looking for some upside or downside then wait for those levels that I talked about uh, wait for a break through those levels that I talked about. Uh, now, NASDAQ 100, guys. Um, so, NASDAQ 100 and also drifted nicely to the downside on Friday, but then it managed to recover somewhat and close uh, the trading session in positive territory, slightly in positive territory, of course. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the cash index right now is trying to climb higher. Um, it's trying to recover somewhat, and uh, yeah, it's currently trading at around 14,880. Uh, 14,866, something like that. Um, so not far, not far from where it closed on Friday, to be honest. So either way, guys, I would say like this, that when I when I talked about this one, I said that we might see you know a correction lower, maybe a test of this 200 day EMA together with the 100 day EMA. If these two provide support, a nice rebound here could be possible as well. Uh, what we're getting right now here is uh, yeah a nice little rebound. However, however, I would prefer still to for the upside. I would prefer to wait for a push through this 15,265 territory right here um, a nice good pop above it yep would confirm a forthcoming higher high and more buyers could join in now um, if um, if we're looking for some downside right now then probably somewhere a drop below this uh, 14,705 zone uh, which uh, is marked by the low of the 28th of March and uh, a nice good drop below it uh, and uh, might kind of yet yeah, might attract a few more sellers um, the only I mean like I said at the same time yeah we could get the uh, a drop below the 200 day EMA as well so everything kind of would line up nicely here uh, for the sellers now until we get that we cannot really you know get comfortable with the downside and in a way let's have a quick look what what did we do here on the Fibonacci and boom there we go the 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci guys is just exactly near that area the one that I talked about so if we do drop below this then well I mean we could see this one drifting a little bit more to the downside for now I am just observing this one because again this is not really ideal for me um, yes we are seeing a bit, a bit of a re, you know a rebound from that 23.6 percent um, but I would still prefer to wait maybe for a push above this 15,265 level first now DXY the dollar index um, continu continues to rebound I mean look at this I mean this is just continues to range sorry uh, yeah but it's at the moment I mean if we do pop above that 90 8.4 sorry we already popped above the 98.40 zone if we stay above that area we continue to trade above that area then yes i'll aim for the upper side of this uh this um range so yeah pretty straightforward on this one guys if it falls back below this and falls maybe even below this uh 21 day ema now yeah i mean here we might uh, see a move to the downside towards that 97.80 zone, which is the lower side of the range. So for now, um, like I said, I'm leaning a little bit higher here within, uh, I'm aiming a little bit higher within the um, within the range. Um, let's see how this is going to play out. For now, uh, like I said, it's, it's quite interesting in this sideways activity. If you do like to trade ranges, guys, congratulations. This is a perfect one for you. Uh, gold, guys, gold. Um, yeah, we're stuck here right now. We're, um, we're near this 1918 zone. I talked about this level. If you remember, I said that, um, Basically, last week I talked about this idea that I said that maybe, just maybe, we could be seeing this one as a, a nice uh, little head and shoulders pattern. And, uh, well, yeah, we are. Uh, it seems that 
could be the case. The neckline could be around this 1918 zone. However, until we get that confirmation break, we cannot really, uh, you know, we cannot really kind of get comfortable with uh, this idea. So because it could still rebound, it's, you know, it doesn't mean that it can only, let's say, you know, go lower from, from here, although everything's kind of leaning towards that. But um, that's why uh, for the upside. Now, previously I talked about this 1966 zone, but uh, for the upside, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep an eye on this downside line here. Uh, taken from the high of the, let me just up, up, put this one, there we go, taken from the high of the uh, 10th of March. Now, if we break above this downside line, yes, I'll start considering maybe a bit of a move to the up, to the upside, because maybe then um, this idea of a uh, this idea of a, um, you know, head and shoulders pattern here could, you know, could could be scrapped. So, so at the moment, like I said, yeah, the, this is the game plan. We are at a very interesting spot here. I mean, in general, you could also say that we are, you know, forming a descending triangle, which could be the case as well. So, you know, uh, everything's kind of leaning towards the downside, but a confirmation break is still needed. Uh, WTI oil. Uh, so, uh, WTI oil uh, drift nicely to the downside uh, this 99.19 area um, is currently providing support still so um, if you're looking for some further declines I mean we need to see a, another break below this we already had some breaks here but another break would be needed just to kind of you know be a little bit more so that it could be a little bit more reassuring however uh, what's happening right now here is not really you know for me it's not really picture perfect and uh, if if let's say for example if it pops above uh, above Friday's high here near which is around the 101.60 uh, we could maybe see a bit of a, a larger correction here to the upside and we, we, where we could end up testing this downside line taken from the high of the 8th of March um, again I uh, would say at the moment uh, with oil oil in general is a tricky one uh, what I talked about with you guys um, last month basically i said that if we stay below that 115 zone you know like then uh, we could see uh we could see like uh, another decline going into this month i mean uh the moment what i'm thinking here is that what could happen we might see you know maybe a push higher if if again if the 115 level uh provides uh, strong resistance then another decline could be possible and this is where my theory my idea would kind of come in nicely at the moment I would say mm, if we do continue or actually I probably would need to readjust this a little bit this 99.19 probably doesn't really reflect the true picture here so I would say again let's put it this way this 98.54 that's the low of the 29th of March I do understand we kind of violated that level uh, on Friday and today already but um, yeah if we do violate this one again then I will I will aim for the downside and I'll aim initially for that 93.56 zone or this upside support line taken from the low of the 2nd of December. Um, now, uh, again, uh, like I said, for the upside, I would say a break of this downside line is needed, but then we have a problem with the 115 territory. So if that provides resistance, another decline could be possible. Um, Ethereum, very quickly on that one. Um, so drifting nicely to the upside um, continues to yeah continues to climb higher I would say even grind higher because it's kind of on a slow move to the upside but in general everything's looking quite positive we are um, above some key resistance barriers let me just grab one of those so we are above this barrier, this uh, 3,412 zone. Uh, we are, yeah, above this area. Um, if I would say if we continue to trade above it, this is the high, by the way, of the 12th of January. If we continue to trade above it, then yes, my next target uh, easily could be uh, this one right here. Let me just put this one on the chart. There we go. This 3,891 zone marked by the high of the 4th of January, or in other words, the highest point of January. 
January. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that's the highest point of this year as well. Yeah, there we go. Could be quite an interesting target. Um, but for that, we need to see this one continuing to trade at least above this hurdle. Um, don't get me wrong, we might see a bit of a retracement here, um, maybe back towards this 200-day uh, EMA or something like that. But um, I mean, this would be the, like, the last option for the bulls to step in. However, if we drop below all of the EMAs, now this is where, yeah, I mean, it could be quite tricky to continue um, aiming higher. Um, AUD USD, so uh, quite an interesting move. So we had a bit of consolidation here, so started ranging, and uh, yeah, now we're seeing a push higher. However, um, oh, and by the way, yeah, this this idea worked out nicely. I said that we might see that 23.6% retracement here on the Fibonacci. We got that. We now we then we rebounded, and now we're it seems like we're trying to push higher now. In order to get comfortable with further advances, um, I would say uh, a push above uh, this barrier is needed. A push above the current, uh, or should, no, I wouldn't say the current, but the highest point of um, uh, the highest point of March. That's what we need to see here in order to get comfortable with further advances. Now this level is roughly around here. There we go. Let me just put this one on the chart. So this 70, 0 0.75 40 zone. So a nice good pop above that 0 0.75 40 zone would be needed in order to aim for some higher levels. At the moment, I'm just observing this one. Yes, it's leaning a little bit more towards the upside, but um, confirmation break is still needed. For the downside, pretty straightforward. The drop below that. 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci would do the trick, or shall I say, should I say could do the trick for a few more sellers. Uh, USD JPY, very quickly on that one. This one's a bit of a mess, I would say. So uh, I need to get rid of this Fibonacci. We'll, we kind of, kind of reached that 38.2, but okay, it's not an ideal t test here, but nevertheless, we'll take that. I think if I'm going to start drawing something like this, I mean, eventually I'll probably see, okay, this is even better. So uh, this is what I wanted to say, that I'll probably eventually see a, a better test here. So this, apparently this 23.6 here um, kind of looks better a little bit if we if we draw it this way now either way guys it seems like i'm trying to find something where it's not you know uh, so let's get rid of this i would say it's a pretty straightforward approach it will be a pretty straightforward approach now on this one we are trading above this upside line right here uh, so i'm gonna put this on the chart there we go uh taken from the low of the 25th 2nd of September of last year. Uh, as you can see, we have moved quite a lot from um, from that upside line and from these EMAs even. So maybe a test of one of those EMAs could be possible. Now, in order to consider maybe a, like I said, a move to the downside, then I would prefer to wait for a drop below this 121.28 zone. A nice good drop below it, yep, may uh, open the door towards that 21-day EMA. And then we will take it from there. Uh, for the uh, for the upside now, um, I would probably stick to some something like 123.20. Um, if we climb above that, then yes, I will aim for the uh, the highest point of March uh, near the uh, 123. Uh, sorry, 125.20. 10 zone. If we, you know, and then if we clear that, then high, of course higher levels could be met. But at the moment, yes, uh, we are uh, we are kind of stuck here a little bit. I wouldn't say that I'm bullish here, and I wouldn't say that I'm bearish. I'm neutral on this one right now because I don't like these scenarios. But if we get a break through one of those levels that I just mentioned, I mean that's when it could become a little bit more interesting, especially if it drops, let's say, below this 121.28 zone. Uh, GBP CAD very quickly on that one. I, I talked about this pair last week, and uh, yep, um, we are still trading below that steep downside resistance line taken from the high of the uh, 23rd of February. Um, it, we are we have this downside line, yeah, which is still intact. And if you're looking for some downside, guys, I mean, yes, we could still go lower, but a confirmation drop below this 1.6366 level is still required. And then, yeah, more sellers could join in. For the upside, uh, a break of this downside line is needed. Um, and uh, if 
if we yeah if we break through this downside line then yes I'll aim for some higher levels but initially I'll aim only for that uh, 21 day EMA because if it provides resistance again then yeah another decline could be possible uh, GBP USD so GBP USD we we found some support near this 1.389 territory it talked about this level um, and uh, yeah we are now kind of you know holding to it or should I say above it um, if we drop below it um, and stay below it then yeah I'll go for lower levels for the upside I would need to see a push somewhere above this 1.3273 zone to be honest I mean of course I'll start looking at some higher levels if we do climb above that 21 day EMA but probably uh, more buyers could join in on the break of this one uh, GBPCHF so also quite an interesting one uh, because we are keeping a close eye on this highlighted territory now although yeah last week we did violate it uh, but as you can see we kind of traded near it and then we pushed back up so I would say I would need to see another uh, another drop below this 1.2121 territory if we get that then yes I'll go for uh, slightly lower levels um, and my next target then could be this 1.1921 zone uh, euro GBP guys euro GBP um, as I said before one of my least favorite pairs and you can see why I mean I last week I talked about this and I mentioned that yeah I really it's my most unfavorable pair uh, but I do look at this one sometimes just to see you know if it actually you know if fixes itself and starts uh, working a little bit more with technical analysis but okay so it doesn't do that uh, either way or maybe on the same at the same at the same time it's it's for if you do like to trade it I mean okay so maybe that's you know that's something something that's more uh, approachable for you I mean more more interesting for you because for example here I mean uh, we once again uh, violated the 200 day EMA we stayed above it um, but then the next day kind of we drifted back below it so um, in a way yeah I mean it's uh, it, <laughs> it gave us some sort of like a false breakout especially if you look at it on the weekly chart but on the weekly chart we won't have this um, this 200 day EMA there so yeah it's kind of that's why it's a little bit irrelevant but either way guys um, it seems like that once let's say we get a uh, a violation of a certain area barrier level uh, probably we need to kind of stick to the till the end of the week to see what's going to happen further if it continues to trade by uh, above, let's say above a certain level here in my case here the 0 0.8478 zone um, if we continue to trade above it then uh, yeah, I mean, we could see uh, some higher levels, but um, but you can see here it kind of drifted higher, but then reversed back down. So it's a little bit uh, tricky right now. So now what I'm keeping an eye on, of course, is this upside line. I want to see what's going to happen here. And this one upside line is taken from the low of the 7th of March. If we get a break through it, then uh, yeah, lower levels could be met, guys. And uh, finally, Euro USD. So. Uh, Currently, um, this barrier, this 1.1121 zone, I mean, we did get a nice pop above it, but there we go. We didn't really, you know, uh, we didn't really kind of stay above it. So we're now back to this downside line, or at least we're trying to test this downside line, uh, sorry, upside line again. If we clear this upside line, then yes, we I will continue. Uh, maybe I'll consider a bit of a move to the downside. Um, probably going further I will have to redraw everything here but for now I'm going to keep it until maybe tomorrow I'll pick up on this one tomorrow as well uh, just to see you know what we're how we're playing out here but I think uh, some levels will have to be readjusted uh, redrawn uh, so but for now I want to see like I said how this is going to play out today um, I'm keeping an eye on this upside line here and especially don't forget that if DXY continue, continues to push higher uh, then yep we could see euro usd moving uh nicely to the downside so let's see how all this is going to play out guys now then um okay so i'll have to wrap it up here guys thank you very much for watching this recorded session i do apologize for not running this live unfortunately for now it can, it'll have to stay like this but i, I hope you won't get too dis dis disappointed with this um thank you very much for, in general for tuning in and, and you know watching my video really appreciate that guys and i'll see you tomorrow uh, or should i say 
catch my video tomorrow. Um, also, somewhere around the same time, like I normally start my uh, my live sessions. And so, um, so yeah, uh, w watch out for the video. You know, after around that time. So, thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.